If you've struggled to play with a smooth feel that's in the pocket and super solid, there's an exercise that really will transform your feel. This is an exercise you can do with your metronome, and I'll go ahead and tell you it's not easy, it's challenging, but it is totally worth it. Let's dig in, you can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. This is a channel where we're all about teaching you Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. This is a channel where we're all about teaching you the core skills that really matter, that really get you where you wanna go. Uh, so you can know your next step and always know what to practice and get serious results in less time. And speaking of knowing your next step and making serious progress in less time, grab my free guide, my free gift to you. It's called your Drumming Progress Blueprint. It's really cool because you can identify which drumming stage you're in from stage one, beginner to stage six, session drummer. Uh, or anywhere in between and know exactly how to level up to the next stage and eventually reach full mastery of the drums. It tells you everything you need to know. There's links to additional in-depth lessons. Super cool. This is just your all-in-one resource for knowing where you're at, knowing your next step, and getting big-time results. So, totally free. Go download that. On with today's lesson. Our goal in doing this exercise is to essentially wean ourselves off the metronome. If you're used to playing with a quarter note metronome or even an eighth note metronome at slower tempos, uh, hopefully you haven't been trying to play to a 16th metronome at slow tempos because that's even crazier. If you're playing to a super busy metronome, a lot of times all you're hearing is the metronome. And when you're practicing along with that, it's really not actually improving your time that much. It's kind of like, it, it kind of becomes your training wheels or your crutch. And when suddenly you remove that, your time doesn't automatically get better. Instead, there are specific strategic things we've gotta make sure we're doing in our practicing to make sure we're actually building our internal sense of time. The metronome itself won't do that for us unless we're practicing correctly and practicing in a smart way. So that's what this exercise is gonna lead us into doing. It's called the metronome weaning exercise, at least that's what I call it. I definitely did not come up with this. This is nothing unique and original. Tons of drummers have been doing this for a long time. But essentially what we're gonna do is start off with a quarter note click, and then that click is gonna to turn to half notes and then whole notes, so we're essentially weaning ourselves off the metronome, gradually pulling it out from under us and seeing how we do. Uh, this forces us to do a lot of really cool listening things that every musician needs to be able to do well that we just neglect to focus on a lot of times. So I'm gonna demonstrate it for you so that you can see exactly how this works. So you'll hear the click track that I pre-made uh, for this recording where you'll hear it do the, the quarter notes for four bars, we'll go to half notes for four bars and so on. Gradually it'll disappear and then gradually phase back in. So we'll see if I can stay with it. You can see how this works and then we'll talk about why this works so well and what it really will do for your playing and how it will transform your time and your feel. And I'll show you exactly how to practice this. So without further ado, I'm gonna give this a try. So why does this work? Why is this such a powerful exercise? I believe it's extremely powerful. I know it helped me a lot in just developing my time and my feel. And really the simple reason why that's the case is because it shifts your listening from the metronome to yourself. Because you really need to be listening a lot to yourself if you're gonna have a good feel. Now, I know that goes against the philosophy of if you're playing with a band, be listening to what's going on around you, and that's true. You definitely need to listen to what's going on around you. And if you're playing along with a song, you're learning a song, you're playing with the recording, well, obviously be listening to that recording. 
but you've also got to listen to yourself or else who knows what you're playing is going to sound like and feel like. It's generally the difference between a drummer who has great feel and a drummer who just, I don't know, feels kind of sloppy or unmusical is that the drummer with great feel is listening well and is paying attention to their playing and thinking through, all right, how does this sound? How does this sound? How does it feel? Is my time good? These are things that require some active concentration. You can't just assume that your feel is going to automatically get good, though it will, the foundation of your feel will get better and better over time. But you can really accelerate this by focusing on it and by paying attention to it. So what this exercise does, by eliminating the click slowly, it forces you to pay more attention to actually how your time is and how everything that you play feels because you're no longer glued to the click. Your ear is no longer glued to the click. And that's a really cool thing. The click ceases to be a crutch and you actually pay attention to your time. So that's what's powerful here. If there's anything you take away from this, I want it to be that the key to good time and good feel is listening and just actively listening to yourself and thinking through, all right, am I playing this in time? How does it feel and how does it sound to play this in time? So how do we practice this? Well, I'm gonna provide you with some pre-made click tracks like the one I played along with that you can go download. So those are in the description. So you can download those. I think there's seven of them. I've got them at a few different tempos. And of course you can make your own. You might be able to do it with a metronome app or if you've got um, software that'll do it, you can create your own. But to get started, these are just MP3 audio tracks that you can play along with that are at seven different tempos. But what you may wanna do before you even dive into that, before you commit to just going for it and playing along with the entire click track, practice, you know, pick a tempo, I would say probably about 100 beats a minute because it's a good moderate tempo that's not so slow that it's easy to rush and it's not so fast that dragging is a challenge. Um, 100 is just a good moderate tempo, um, nice relaxed walking pace. So I'd recommend you start at 100. Practice just grooving, just playing a basic, you know, eighth notes on the hats, one, kick on one and three, snare on two and four. Just that, nothing fancy, just play that, 100 beats a minute with a quarter note click, and make sure you can get that locked in. So get that locked in with the quarter notes. Make sure that you're relaxing. We'll talk about that a little more in a minute, but make sure you're relaxing and you're just listening to yourself. You're just thinking about how does this groove feel? Does it feel good? Does it feel choppy or sloppy? The more you can relax, the better it's gonna feel. Then adjust your metronome from quarter notes to half notes. And really, these days, any metronome app will do that. Um, I use one called Tempo Advance that I really like. Uh, by Frozen Ape. It's a great metronome app. I've had it for like 11 years now. And I've uh, not even updated it that often. It's been a really good app. There's another good one called Soundbrenner, and it's a free one. And it'll pretty much, it'll do a lot of the same essential features. One of those is muting beats. So if you have your metronome set to do four clicks, so four, four, bump, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you can then change the sound of each beat, which means also muting each beat. So you could set that metronome up and as you've got it playing, you could then click and, and eliminate two and four. So then it's only playing one, two, three, four, one. And then you could silence beat three. So then it's just one, two, one. And so you can do this exercise that way. So either way, grab a good metronome app. You can do this very easily thanks to technology. So set your metronome to half notes, continue just practicing that same groove. Same thing, don't change anything, and focus on keeping your eighth notes on the hi-hats relaxed, or you could also play this on the ride. Make sure your timekeeping hand is just nice and relaxed and staying right there in time, because if it stays in time, the kick and the snare will also. So be listening to yourself, paying attention to, do I feel like anything's skipping a little bit or laying back too far? Just make sure you're staying right there on it. This is gonna direct your listening so well onto your groove and how you're sounding, how you're feeling. And then the metronome is just kind of there as a guide. That's what you want here. You want the metronome to be your guide, not your, um, not your training wheels that force you to stay balanced. It's kind of just like the road that you're on in a way. And it's okay to you know weave a little bit and push or lay back a tad bit, but it's always there to remind you where the time is. And so then you can go to whole notes. So have it go to whole notes which starts to get pretty tough. And if you've never done this before, it might take some time to get there and that's okay. I don't remember when I first practiced this, uh, but I, do, I definitely did not excel at playing along to a whole note click right off the bat. And there were a lot of other things I had to work on to get there, which we're gonna cover in a minute, because there's some other key important things here that if you're struggling with these things, it's gonna make this exercise very difficult, but don't worry, because we'll talk about it. But it takes time. It takes time just to get relaxed with a quarter note click. Sometimes you get so comfortable with eighth notes, that comfort zone of, ah, yes, my right hand is just locking with every eighth note, gung, 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 
that you feel naked and in the dark when it goes to quarter notes. Uh, and that's not good. You need to get used to that. Get used to being okay with quarter notes. And then once you can do that, and once you're feeling good with the quarters, then go to the halves. And spend as much time on half notes as you need to. Get relaxed there. Um, knowing that, okay, at 100 beats a minute, half notes are the same as quarters at 50. And so if you can do the halves at 100, that means you can probably play very slowly also with a quarter note metronome. And so this also helps your slow playing because it helps just build that natural internal sense of time. Then go to the whole notes. As soon as you're able to, go to the whole notes and be patient with yourself. That's definitely the key here. Things that I talk about a lot, patience and repetition. Be patient in the repetition. Do this over and over again, all the time, every day, as often as you can. You're getting that repetition, you're logging the time, but be patient with yourself knowing that this kind of time development doesn't just happen overnight. It's definitely a process, not an event. So that's how I recommend you start getting into this if you haven't before. And so just start at probably 100 beats a minute with your metronome app. But once you've done that, and once you're feeling like, okay, I got this, download my click tracks, or you can go ahead and download them, have them on your computer, on your phone, ready to go. Then pull up the 100 beats a minute one and just practice playing along to it. It'll start out, it'll count you off, it'll give you quarter notes so you can play along. And then just get relaxed and you might not even notice when it cuts to half notes. And if you're super locked in, you won't even notice when it cuts to quarter note, um, when it cuts to whole notes rather. When you go from the half notes to the whole notes, you, you'll just keep on grooving. It'll be fine and you won't even notice that the click's gone out from under you when you're listening to yourself. Remember that we're not trying to focus on the click, we're listening to ourselves. That's the goal here. And then gradually the metronome will come back in. If you fail, that's fine because we all mess this exercise up because we tend to rush or we tend to drag. That's okay. Practice it, practice it, you'll get it. And then try some of the other tempos. You might find that 120 is actually a little easier because it's faster, or maybe 80 beats a minute is your sweet spot. Test out the other click tracks at the other tempos. But, so I, I mentioned a few minutes ago that there's another essential thing that you've got to make sure you're doing well, otherwise this can be a struggle. And I've alluded to it a bunch, talking about staying relaxed. And basically, in a nutshell, stay relaxed. It's that simple. But in order to stay relaxed, you've got to be gripping well. And so this is just one of those core things that we always end up coming back to in these lessons because it's so core and so important. But make sure that you're gripping your stick well. Make sure you're gripping it loosely. Make sure that you've established a fulcrum point, whether that fulcrum is on your middle finger. I like to grip about right here, really, where if I toss the stick in the air, it's just pivoting right here between my thumb and actually my middle finger. Some people would rather be index. You can definitely make index work. I like middle because it helps open my hand up and be a little bit looser when I'm playing slow and open like this. And so make sure you're establishing that fulcrum. It's basically a hinge point. It's literally like there's an axle right here and the stick is staying on that. So you're just providing a little bit of pressure, but not too much, enough that the stick stays in place, but not so much that it's not able to, to swing back and forth like this. So as long as you're staying loose, what's cool is that a stick, when it's in motion, it's kind of like the pendulum of a clock, where it's naturally going to play in time. If you're going like this on, on your snare, or for the sake of volume here, on, on your practice pad, it's just like when you're walking. Like if you go walk on a flat, straight surface, you don't have to think about the tempo that you're walking at. You naturally walk at a steady tempo. Why? Because you've established a pace. You're not having to remind yourself, oh, don't speed up, oh, don't slow down. Gotta make sure I walk steady. That'd be crazy, that'd be silly. And it's the same way with, with our sticks. As soon as you establish a motion, it's like the, it's like kid jumping on a trampoline. That's always my go-to analogy. Or a basketball bouncing. It naturally is steady. There's no need to think about, oh, is this staying in time, is this staying in time? It's gonna naturally stay in time and you're not gonna have to think about that too much when you're loose and when you're relaxed. So this is what you wanna strive for. I've got a lot of lessons here on the channel about that because it's so core, so crucial. So I'll link those below if you need to review that or go more in depth on grip and fulcrum and smooth rebound. That's kind of a prerequisite here. Make sure that you're doing that well because otherwise you might struggle with staying in time because you're gonna have to think too much about that timekeeping hand. Versus if you're loose and relaxed, you don't have to devote too much thought to that. It's naturally gonna stay in time which means you can shift your focus more to listening and more to dynamics and feel and things like that. And that's where this exercise actually becomes a fun challenge when you're able to just sit back, relax, and think about how does this groove feel? Okay, let's throw in a fill here or let's change parts. And then you can get really creative with it and that's where your time really gets solid. You really develop that in the pocket kind of feel that we all want. And that's what sets an amateur apart from a very professional sounding drummer. Know that it takes you a little bit of time to get there, 
especially if you're still working on your grip. But know that the grip is very core, very essential. And if that's a struggle, that's the one thing you can work on right now. The one thing to focus on, make sure you're getting the grip squared away and then come back to this exercise. And just practice this regularly, give it a few weeks, give it a few months. It, it might take some time to really develop that, that sense, that, that feel. But the more you're playing along with songs, the more you're listening to music, especially music that's recorded to a click, like most new music is, uh, or if you're playing with a band, or you're playing maybe at your church, and maybe if you guys play along any tracks or you use a click track, well, there's some really good practice. As much as you're doing these things, these real world musical kinds of things that will build your timing, the, the quicker you're gonna get a good handle on this. And this exercise is just gonna enhance that. So you can do this, be patient with yourself, practice the core things uh, and start with quarter notes at 100, go to half notes, then whole notes, use my click tracks, have fun with this. Hey, and as we wrap up, don't forget to grab that guide I told you about earlier. Find out which drumming stage you're in, whether you're in stage one beginner or you're moving up towards stage six session drummer. That's the goal, whether or not you want to be like a session drummer, recording drummer. Basically, that's the name that we're giving to the culmination of all the skills we work on. That's where you've mastered your instrument. You have become one with your instrument, as cheesy as it sounds, but be honest, that's what we want, right? We want to just have the drums be an extension of ourselves. That's what happens when you get to stage six. And so whatever stage you're at, whether you're a beginner, whether you're just piecing things together, maybe you're gigging, uh, maybe you're able to jam, whichever stage you fall into, when you grab this guide, you'll be able to identify exactly where you're at, see exactly what your next steps are so that you can take action, level up to the next stage and get results and make progress and reach your drumming goals and dreams. This is powerful. This guide's been helping a lot of people, so be sure to check it out before you go. As always, guys, thanks so much for hanging out today. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that this helps you out a lot. I hope you get some results. I hope your feel gets better, your time gets better, and I hope your bandmates notice. I hope all the people you play with notice, hey, his time's getting better. Her feel is getting way better. That would be awesome. That'd be incredible, and I'd love for you to tell me about it uh, when that happens. Just be patient. Give it some time. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. I'll see you on the next lesson.